more intense uh, thực sự quên lời <cười> Hi guys, I'm Amy and I'm from AFIT, Academy of British International Training. It's a pleasure to be here today and show you guys what to do and not to do when taking IELTS speaking part 3. And the topic is gonna be about traveling. In the last video, we described a beautiful place one visited. And today, we're gonna go and take a deeper look into that subject. So, no further, let's get started. So, now we're moving to part 3, okay? Are you nervous? So the first thing to remember is that it's only a test and that's it's just an examiner. She's here to help, not bite you. The more anxious and uncomfortable you are, the more difficult it is to keep up your fluency and maintain coherence. So just relax, smile and take a deep breath and try to speak to the examiner as if you're really having an interesting conversation with someone. Oh, I'm sure we am. Okay, how easy is it to travel around your country? Very easy, piece of cake, and you can travel anywhere you want to go in Vietnam. It is not a good idea to give a very short answer in an IELTS speaking test. You should try to extend your answer. Three ways to expand your answer are 1. Explaining why 2. Give an example and 3. Showing the opposite side of the argument. Currently, it's basically a piece of cake to travel everywhere you want to go in Vietnam. There are airports in every major city, national road lines, and bus service. Airlines are alternatively favorable due to the fact that it's convenient and very easy for people who want to travel to another country. There are good roads too, so you can go anywhere you want to go in your own car. What means of transportation do you think people prefer to use when traveling? Why? Um, uh, it's a necessary part in our life um, because because uh, because um, uh, um, it isn't a bad idea to pause and think and then answer the question that I heard of you. Thinking will have to get the thoughts about a question that you're unsure of, but when you pause, you can use certain phrases that might help, such as. That is an interesting question, let me think. There is no easy answer to this, I suppose. I'm not really sure, but I would say. But remember, don't overdo and start every single answer with such phrase, because the examiner might be able to spot that you have come prepared with scripted answer. And that might be able to put the examiner off. That is an interesting question, let me think. That would depend on who is traveling and where they are going. Each type of transport has some pros and cons, so I think the most important factors that influence more than anything else is the destination they are reaching and the distance you are going to travel. Mm. Are you traveling within your own country or internationally? Like, uh, Can you travel there by train or plane? Uh, what are the options that are available for you? Obviously, the type of transport that people prefer when traveling depends a lot on many different things that related to the trip. What are the negative effects of tourism on the economy? What is revolutionizing the tourism industry? What are the demonstration effects associated with tourism? What are the methods of evaluating impacts of religious tourism to certain the impact of tourism in a community? Staying silent travel tests will not gain you high score, so make sure that you answer each and every question in some way. If you're struggling, don't panic. Instead, take a deep breath and ask the examiner to repeat or paraphrase the question for you. You can use Pardon, can you repeat the question one more time? Or can you explain the question or paraphrase it for me, please? This will give you more time to think. And remember, don't ask the examiner to repeat every single question or every single word. And simply, don't sit in silence. I'm sorry, can you repeat it one more time, please? Okay. Has traveling become safer in recent years? 
Actually, I think that the uh, Java uh, become safer uh, due to the fact that uh, Apple security uh, become more intense. Uh, even you pronounce word clearly, flat intonation will make it difficult to follow what you say. We vary intonation, pitch, volume, and speaking speed in order to maintain the listener interest and the direct attention to our main ideas. Even for I.O. examiner, who are trained to listen carefully to whatever a candidate says, will find a flatly intoned response difficult to follow. And your response might be marked down for both pronunciation and coherence as a result. Actually, I think that traveling has become safer due to the fact that airport security has been more intense with careful checks on each person with biometric introduced. How do you think people will travel in the future? I, uh, I prefer airlines because it's more uh, expensive, it's cool, it's nice, it's good. I don't know. Can I have another question? You will lose mark from coherence if your answer completely fails to address the questions. Ask yourself before you begin speaking if you fully understood. And don't be afraid to ask the examiner for help. I think that people will often take a flight to get to wherever they want to go. Nowadays, while traffic jam is occurring more frequently, and the railway hasn't been developed since the end of the 20th century, airlines have been improved and extend to this peak. More and more people are choose to travel by air since it offers more delightful service, amenities, and simply less time consuming. Okay, thank you. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. And that is the do and don'ts for our IELTS speaking part 3. Hope you find this video interesting and helpful for your IELTS practice progress. Please like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and comment down below what you want to see from Ed next time. Thank you and see you next time.